Okay, guys, in this video, I'll go through the whole off grid um, building that we made for a client in Sham. Uh, it's an off grid house, 150 square meters, if we take the outside space included. And it has a solar system that's going to power everything. It's basically in the woods, and we'll, we'll see how it's situated, located, and how it works. And we'll go through the whole process. As you can see here in the beginning, um, we uh, started with sketches. This started in November, December 22 with uh, sketches and, you know, just uh, throwing ideas around what we were after. And it went fr from a very small, tiny house to something bigger. We started with like 50 square meters, but ended up with 150. <laughs> so, and that's, I'm not too surprised about that because, uh, you know, you might have an idea that you can live on 40 square meters, uh, but once you start thinking about living space and where you're gonna make food and how big bedroom you want and stuff, it it gets bigger, of course. And then uh, certain spaces that were very attractive, we could do without increasing the cost uh, a lot. So, uh, for example, up here is a very nice porch. We'll see that late in later picture. But that that was an early idea um, to have this porch here because we wanted the solar on top there. And then in the beginning, this porch was very small, but then it became bigger. And then we added more space here for walking and on the other side also so just how it goes and then here we see some pictures from the start of the process planning the land looking at the land do we have to raise the building or not and we ended up raising it 80 centimeter which i think is a good compromise we could go even higher but this area is not prone to flooding so, um, but we want to protect it a little bit, it just makes it easier uh, because it's a place where a lot of insects and animals are so it just makes it better to raise it a little bit for sure um, and here is the ceremony that always uh, is important in Thailand when you start building something the client is there, the builders are there, etc and here we have from the crane work, from the concrete work. And here we have from about in the middle of the process where the structure is up, but nothing is really inside yet, but uh, soon to come. And here we can see the generator that we used in the beginning before the solar was installed. Uh, so obviously when you're building in the woods, when you start, you have no electricity. So we used a 5 kilowatt uh, generator, gasoline, uh, very happy with it, it worked very nicely through the whole project. We could use all kinds of equipment and many at the same time, and it throttles after the load, so it's uh, quite efficient. Very nice uh, equipment. Um, now, when we talk about all this, so it seems like uh, everything went uh, seamlessly, no problems at all. But normally when you build houses in Thailand, it, uh, you have uh, problems. It's impossible to avoid. And uh, one of the big problems that we had was that suddenly the foreman that started, he uh, didn't want to... There was a conflict between some of the guys. So he didn't want to be foreman anymore. So he basically quit just after about a month. Um, in that situation, we were able to rec recruit uh, another guy that was as experienced, but he, he didn't have any experience being a foreman, but he was had same experience regarding skill of a building. So we were able to support him and develop him into a foreman. Uh, but I have to say that he really stepped up. That was Mint, by the way, Mint. People remember him from other, if you follow our group and Facebook uh, um, Facebook group, you will know the, the name Mint. We call him the Spider-Man. Um, I'll, I'll put the picture here so you can see. Um, and uh, 
that's the key when you have problems. First of all, uh, just expect problems. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. And then when the problems occur, try to remain calm. Just find solutions. And if you can't find any solutions immediately, wait. <laughs> and then it will come to you. Uh, the basic thing is... Uh, it's going to be more chaotic than building a house in the West just because of many different things. Uh, but if you expect problems, and at least then you have a chance to sort of get through it. And we have, the, have built many houses now. And there's always some problems, some big, some small. Um, but... Uh, we always solve them, that's for sure. We're now going to switch over to some videos that I made throughout the build, so you can get the feel for, for, the, for the house, and also we go through the solar, so enjoy. And uh, yeah, of course, if you're interested in a similar house, uh, don't uh, hesitate to get in touch. And this is quite nice because you can see how we do. That's called Wango connectors, those things, those orange things instead of taping and uh, these are proper connection set so this electrical system is done the way it should be with all the colors correct you know green for ground blue for neutral and brown for light and this is the solar protection the the panels the energy from the panels come in here that's one string that's the second string and then after it's converted to AC power, it goes through these. These are AC. That's the solar system. And now the electrical starting to get finished. Switches. And why do we put these outside the wall? Uh, that's because we don't want to mess with the insulating effect of the of the AAC blocks. What we are using is uh, blocks that insulate, so we don't want to destroy part of that insulating effect by going into the wall. Now, of course, some people won't want that, won't. They don't want to see this. And of course, then we can do that too, but then it's gonna cost a lot more money because we have to use thicker walls. So what we are trying on this build is to combine budget with quality. And one of the ways that we do that is by doing this kind of style. Uh, and I think it looks okay. But, I mean, personal taste, of course. Um, and we have the same kind of style here. With the pipe outside the wall. It's a big saving when you don't put it inside the wall, both in work. And also, of course, the that you don't destroy the insulation effect. These tiles are really nice. They are used in, the, in this bedroom too and all the way over in the main room. So, and now they have also started the tiling for the shower. Very nice tiles, I have to say. The so customer has chosen these tiles, so that's not to our credit at all. What else? What else is new? These are up. This is a great window, can open air. I think you saw that last time. Or in the last cut, I should say. So now we are yeah. a few days later and I've started doing the tiles here. It's actually a very cool combination, you know, when you do it like that. You're basically dividing areas by tiles. Yeah. And, um, you can do that in living rooms also, for example, between the eating area and the sitting area. You can have two different tiles, it's no problem. And it actually is quite nice. Um, I thought I would show some other details that we have done that's not common. First of all, you see the foam there, it may be difficult to see, but the foam is cut before it has to be cut. And that's especially important on straight straight places. Let's see where I can... There you can see it on the top there. There is very important. 
because the foam, if the foam was going all the way out, it would become wet in every rainfall and it will become rotten actually. So that's why we kept it about 15 centimeter inside of the edge. So we do many tricks like that. And uh, the PVC that we use is not normal PVC. Let's see if I can show you. It's the strongest kind, it's 13.5. And that's the bar, how much pressure it can take. And uh, what uh, many use here in Thailand is eight. And I should not really use that, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, so what we have done today is uh, set up the solar system. As you can see, we have power and we have internet, 4G internet. And as you can see, the switches are working. Everything good. Now there's no air condition connected yet here, but this system will power two big air conditions in the daytime and one small air condition in the night time, no problem at all. So here are the sockets that are live now. Um, so this is uh, my last day here. I will go home now and these guys will finish. They know what they are going to do. Um, the only thing left is the bathroom where they know what they are supposed to do. And we have the counter out there. That's what's left. So a little bit of lights, but that will be done tomorrow. And then actually everything is finished. Right now they are doing the render for the front of the porch. So it looks good there. So many of you have seen this model in other videos and that has been on grid, but this system can also work off grid, either with one battery or two batteries, depending on how much uh, electricity you use. We have installed lights, lights up there. Obviously they are off now, but they are pretty cool lights. They are LED lights, but uh, they, they uh, each give 18 watts, so, so 36 in each of those, so 72 watts in combination. That's going to give okay light for that uh, room. Uh, you don't want, I don't think you want more up there because it's going to become like a mosquito center <laughs> convention. Uh, so... That's why I, I didn't want to put something even stronger. But we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, probably there are going to be mosquitoes up there, even if you turn off all lights. Just because all around there is woods, you know? Like mosquito land. This is like Disneyland for mosquitoes. <laughs> so let's take a look at the render, yeah. The render is starting to come on there. And then the finishing on the stairs there. So there's not much left here either. So really nice progression. Now just a few more days and that's it. Um, what else? Of course this will all be covered up. Um, here if you press some buttons you can actually see quite a lot of information on the screen. If you don't have access to the app for some reason. So right now it's giving 400 uh, something wattage and uh, it's in uh, UPS mode which is correct for off-grid. Battery is 30%. That's pretty much that. And uh, show you here the lights are working. So on the top here you see Solar 633, it's because it's very cloudy, but that will go up to 6000 and things like that when it's perfect. So it's going to vary according to how many clouds and everything like that. Battery, that means that 605 watts is going into the battery now. And so the battery is charging. And load, we have very little because we just have some lights on. But that's going to increase as you put on more load, you know. So that's that's pretty much what's... And it will say off-grid there because it is off-grid. So, yeah. You should never go below 10% in battery. 
so just keep that in mind that uh, in the beginning be careful what you use at the night so that in the morning when you may wake up it's not under 10%. That's not good. So after some time you will see what you can open and what you can do in the night. But be especially in the beginning be careful.